disk. And I indicate, and at the last hearing, you had your documents on a disk also that we had. Uh, there were some out-of-state witnesses, so the court uh, felt, since we had everybody here, to take testimony from those out-of-state wit witnesses also. Um, the court would note that both of you have provided to the court a binder of your exhibits and that you have labeled them and they're placed in... Um, you know, in in binders as I had requested. So at least that part has been done. Um, you did put some comments on the pictures, ma'am. Um, they were on there before. Okay. They probably should not be on there at some point. If they get admitted, they would have to get admitted without the comments um, because the comments would be hearsay type of, um, of statements. Um, the court would also indicate that... Um, Last, at our last hearing, going through that without having the proper documents and presentation, it's very difficult um, to, to go through this case. Obviously, you're, you're representing yourself and you don't have a legal background. And getting some of this information to the court that is very important, um, there are some limitations because the two of you just don't have the, the background and training and skills as far as being in court. Um, their UNLV has a program, they have a settlement program, um, it's Lydia Nesbaum, I believe her, her name is. Uh, I had talked to her about this case and uh, she's indicated that she's willing to assist the two of you. Now that we have all the documents, the two of you can actually sit down with her and have a discussion regarding everything that's gone on and potentially resolve this case. If you go through um, with her again in a settlement type of a atmosphere, you're not bound by all the legal rules of procedure as far as you know, uh, presenting a document, getting a document admitted into the court record, because right now, just because the two of you have filed documents, doesn't mean that I can look at them. All it means is that it's been you've filed it, but there is a proper way of having evidence presented in court and putting it on the record to make sure that the court can actually look at those documents. And you know, I had some concerns regarding your ability to do that. Um, however, in in a settlement conference type of a uh, atmosphere, one, the the rules of evidence do not apply in that you don't have to have things admitted into the record. You may be able to also um, get hearsay statements in, people who are not before the court, um, because you're trying to settle. It's not a, a trial. It's, trying to settle. If you come back before me on the trial, then all the rules of evidence, uh, the rules of procedure, that all applies. But in a settlement, it doesn't. The other thing is that person um, through the settlement, they can ask questions and go into information that I cannot because I have limitations as a district court judge. I can't know your positions. I can't know if there is an, an offer that you would like to extend to him, ma'am, that would resolve everything and you'd be done with court because that would taint me. Also, sir, I can I cannot know of an offer that you would extend, you know, uh, to your soon-to-be ex-wife. Um, but somebody in a settlement type of a um, atmosphere, having all the documents now that we have them and having the two of you there, you can have an open discussion. At the end of the day, if you resolve, you'll be divorced on that day. If you don't resolve, I will not know anything about that discussion. I am kept out of the loop. Um, so what I would like to do now that I have that information, um, and I don't know, uh, sir, I believe you made, did you make two copies of everything or just one as far as the binders? Oh, two for the court. Okay. So uh, did you get a copy of his, ma'am? Yes. Okay. And then do you have a copy of hers? Yes. We okay. just exchanged a day because she wasn't feeling well and okay. I've been doing things too. All right, so I believe it's in your best interest as far as being able to resolve this case um, sooner than having to go through numerous days of trial and calling people from out of state because, again, if there's, there's any – because we had a very limited evidentiary hearing last time on what had gone on with the business, where things were located, what happened to them. Uh, but 
there may be some of your out-of-state witnesses that you would have to call as a witness and if you want their testimony in you'd actually have to have them come back to court and they would have to um, testify if there's additional things that you'd like them to talk about um, on the other hand if you're in settlement you can you can have a discussion as to what those persons would say if they were to come to court without having them to be physically present so what I would like to do right now um, they have a settlement conference date available and it's on April 8th at 1230 p.m. and again that's on the third floor here at the courthouse you, like you did last time you just go up to the third floor to the receptionist um, this is the last case that they're pretty much going to do for this semester uh, she has a, a an extensive background and training in mediation again she will not make the decision for you but she'll help help you go through this process and it's it's in a non litigation type of a process and so you could be done and she does just a really really good job last semester I sent over eight cases to the UNLV program and they resolved a full resolution on five of them I believe altogether they received 35 cases and they had 17 full resolutions that means almost 50 percent of the cases that they handle they resolve you're done with court you move on with your life and you're done with the stress so what I'd like to do we have two dates right now we have a full day that's set for a week from Friday on March 14th that date um, I'd like to vacate and then send you over to the UNLV program on Mar or on April 8th at 1230 if it's resolved you'll be done with court you don't have to come back if you don't uh, I'll probably set it over for a status check the, um, a couple days after that but we also have a full day on May 2nd I'm gonna lead that on and so if we can get everything done on May 2nd if you're not resolved then I will hear it and and we'll take it here in court if we need more time my calendar is such that I can get you back in here um, probably within that same week or so and then one way or another, had the two of you divorced in May. I do have one question. Yes. I, I didn't put a witness list in my binders, and I just got a handwritten one. I only had three witnesses. Should I you know give what? it to you now? For for purposes of the trial, if we go to trial, you would have to provide that. But I would wait until after the um, the settlement conference. You can provide her a handwritten list and you can explain as far as what the witnesses would say if you called them likewise ma'am you'd be able to do the same thing so um, I don't need it today um, so I'm gonna put this on I'm gonna vacate so you don't have to come back here on March 14th um, there's also a motion for an order to show cause I'm gonna continue that that's set for March 20th uh, that was part of the hearing that I heard um, last time we were here in court I'm gonna set that over on our trial date for May 2nd so you're, you're not gonna to have to come back on the on the March 20th date there is a hearing on March 18th that hearing is um, by Don throne and she is requesting that her attorneys fees be adjudicated that they be reduced to judgment so that's what she is requesting um, I'm not sure what that means. Well, it, your attorney, um, the attorneys that you had, the two of you, you entered into a contractual agreement that you would pay them. And if you fail to pay them, then it's an enforceable agreement. And here in family court, they can come into the court and say, Judge, here's our retainer agreement. Here's how much I charge an hour. This is how much I, you know, work I did on this case and they paid me five thousand dollars and they still owe me four thousand dollars so she's requesting that the court reduce to judgment the outstanding money um, and I believe which let me see here I, I got the paper from her it sounded like it was gonna be a lien on her home it's not a what she would have to do is to get a lien from the court first to reduce it she'd have a lien and get reduced to judgment once you have something that's reduced to judgment then they can try to 
enforce that judgment by any legal means. So I'm not putting a, a lien on anybody's home, okay? Um, but that's why they're here on March 18th is to address that. There's, as far as the divorce, we don't have anything that we're going to deal with on the divorce on March 18th. That's your attorney requesting relief for not getting paid. Okay, so that's on March 18th. Then we had the March 20th, the order to show cause, and I'm going to continue that to the May 2nd. I'm going to vacate the March 14th date, so you don't have to be here in court a week from tomorrow. And then you're going to show up at 1230 on the third floor upstairs and on April 8th, okay? And then I'm going to put this for a status check. Which day of the week is April 8th? Tuesday? I'm going to put a status check in front of me on the 14th of April, and that's going to be at 1030. Again, if you reach a resolution, they will divorce you on that day and, you, and we'll vacate all the future dates here in court. If it's not resolved, then we'll come back and have a discussion so we can be ready to go to trial on May 2nd, okay? All right, so we'll see you um, maybe, maybe not back here on the 14th of April at 1030. And then if you can show up upstairs on April 8th at 1230, okay? Yes. Thank you. Yes. I tried to subpoena um, a couple of people, and and it's all you know that I had stamped here and and everything, and they refused to to take the subpoena. What do I do then? In that regard, ma'am, I cannot give you legal advice because I can't I can't represent your interest or for either of you. So I can't, as a district court judge, I cannot give you legal advice. Um, the only thing that I could say is I believe they have a um, an ask an attorney program through uh, legal aid services that you can come by and they give you 10 or 15 minutes. You can sign up for that and they can, um, or and I don't know if they have any advice that they could give you at the self-help centers. They may not be able to. Generally, they tell you here's a form that you fill out. Um, but as far as legal advice, I can't give you legal advice as to if somebody is disobeying a subpoena or not following it. Okay. All right. You have a good day. Thank you.